we're going to be talking all about food we're going to be talking about behavior we're going to be talking about vets and vet nurses we're going to be talking about uh uh the raw feeding veterinary society because right now we have the one and only and very long suffering morag sutherland she's come to talk to us and tell us uh what makes her tick morag how are you it's lovely to see you oh thank you very much for inviting me pleasure pleasure you're incredibly busy these days with the raw feeding veterinary society oh my goodness yes that is absolutely true it's quite incredible to think that from 2014 wasn't it that we had that very first meeting that i rudely invited myself to yeah, you did well. in swindon <laughs> and now we're this absolutely enormous um enterprising organization and we're really international and lots of exciting things are happening it's it's quite incredible to think that that's happened in such a small space of time it's wonderful isn't it it really is and um i hear that you you've got great things on on in in process do you want to tell us about those i can tell you a certain amount yeah ah, okay. we, we're about to uh, up until now the um discussion really has come in the in the private facebook groups for the professional members and we're moving completely away from facebook and we're moving onto a bespoke platform that's been built for us so everything will be very private and the fantastic thing that this is going to allow us to do which is hopefully going to help lots and lots and lots of people is that instead of being restricted to veterinary surgeons well veterinary professionals veterinary surgeons nurses students of the above we're going to be welcoming absolutely anybody who's interested in raw to join us as a supporter member mm. for an absolute bargain of a pound a month subscription and some of the real expert raw feeding folk will be popping into that group from time to time with pearls of wisdom for everybody so you're saying basically the raw feeding veterinary society is going to be opening uh some of its doors for anybody who fancies coming along for a quid a month exactly that <laughs> that's amazing that's absolutely amazing that's really 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 exciting news and i'm sure that you'll 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 be uh there'll be an avalanche of people a stampede of people uh, i really hope so yeah. and, and the reason behind um you know to be completely honest about this oh nick i can't hear you oh can you not still i can now oh, okay right you've Let's reappeared if, if anything goes um, wrong we'll just close down and restart that's that's the only way to do it with be live just just uh just a word to the wise okay that's handy to know right. and so we're open, opening up the raw feeding veterinary society so that people can share the, the 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 chat the information the experience the wisdom of of everybody uh everybody there that's absolutely fantastic it's wonderful it really is because there's so much i mean if you think that there's, there's what two three four five posts every day on the facebook group of um uh, cases or um, papers or observations or magazine articles or things like this that is a whacking wealth of, of 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 information that you'll be able to just gradually share with everybody it's fantastic that's yeah. really it's it's a, a real shot in the arm i think for for raw feeding who didn't really need a shot in the arm because we you know raw is doing so so well exactly anyway exactly. but this is just i think it's for me it's it's really lovely that the the the, the vets are embracing the 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 the, the ordinary is not the right the the um the, the the person who's feeding their dog and cat raw at home and doing their best and just saying welcome we really embrace you i think it's fantastic it's a really positive move and and i think it's it's going to be wonderful karen boyce says how do we join 
Aha. Well, um, it will be going on the RFES website, which is rfes.info, as soon as the platform's finished, which we hope will be the beginning of April. Right. Fantastic. Okay, so basically just watch rfes.info, rawfeedingveterinarysociety.info, and all will be revealed at the beginning of April. Mm. Okay, that's amazing. Exactly that. Well, the reason we've, we've done this, apart from obviously to share um, things with people who are interested in feeding raw, mm. we're hoping that lots of people will be willing to support us and that what that's going to do is going to enable us to have the funds to be able to start publishing some papers and I, I'm sure that probably lots of your followers are aware of the four pounds for four paws campaign that we've been doing um, and that's specifically for that purpose so it's another uh, uh, to be perfectly honest and straightforward about mm. it it's another income stream to allow us to publish something that is hopefully going to help to educate those vets that aren't yet um, open to the wonders of raw feeding. And it's also worth just um, clarifying that, of course, we're still maintaining our professional membership categories. Um, and we've got lots of exciting plans for those as well. So if you're a vet or a veterinary nurse or a student vet or veterinary nurse, you're absolutely welcome in the in the professional group where which will have a slightly different yeah, yeah, yeah. tone I guess, would be come on down session. yeah if you're if, if, if you're if you're vet, uh, in the veterinary profession uh, e even loosely then um come on down to the raw feeding veterinary society and if you're not then uh, you're welcome as well from the first week in exactly that super 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 exciting rfvs.info guys that's the place to go moya o'kennedy says can those of us living outside the uk join Absolutely, anybody in the whole yeah. wide world is more than welcome. Great. I do have to say we'll predominantly be working in English, but we've got great plans to, uh, we've got lots of Spanish speakers on the committee. And so um, Spanish is easy for us to work in. And we'll obviously do, if English is your second language, we'll do our very, very best to help you and be supportive of, of that. Right. Um, I'm learning a, a new language myself at the moment, so I'm very sympathetic and I'm very ad, uh, admiring of people who manage to conduct their business in in a second language. So we're, we're really supportive of that. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. Really, really good. Mm -hmm. Karen is just, I think she's just explaining something to somebody. Amy Robbins, Raw Feeders, can join the Raw Feeding Veterinary Society group to view papers and discuss stuff. Uh, well, they will be from the 1st of April. So good news for everybody yes. there. That's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So Morag, before you tell us about Gellert Behaviour, which is your wonderful uh, business, your, your, your behaviour business, just, just tell us about how you got to be doing what you're doing now and tell us what you are doing now, please. Okay. Um, so Arguably a slightly odd story. So I qualified as a veterinary nurse many, many, many moons ago. I went through all the sort of normal training that you got in nutrition. I was really interested in nutrition, even as a newly qualified nurse, because it yeah. just seemed obvious that it was important. <laughs> so I went off and did all the available courses that one could do, provided by some of the big companies that provide a lot of CPD to vets and nurses. Yeah. She said tactfully. <laughs> um, and to be absolutely honest, it was not really until I had my own cattle and sheep that I started to really question this um, the, and question the advice that I was being given by my by, by my colleagues, of course, yeah. because my large animal vets were saying to me, don't worm your cattle, don't worm your horses, don't worm your sheep, don't use ectoparasiticides on your cattle, on your sheep, unless they've actually got a problem. And then I'm going back to my, my day job and being told that I needed to give flea and worm treatments to my dogs and cats on a monthly, three monthly, whatever basis. And mm. I was being a little contrarian going well hang on a minute how come these guys are telling me this about this species of animal 
and you're telling me something different about this mm. other species of animal and that really that was what really made me start to go hang on a minute there's more there's more out there there's more to it than this and i i've always been a I, my dogs never had just kibble they always had leftovers and bits and pieces of other things so mm. Mm. thankfully um, and my first dog that I had, that, of, you know, my own dog that I had as an adult, um, she had a splenic mass and was operated on and she was absolutely riddled with cancer. Everything in her abdominal cavity was full of horrible lumps and bumps and really, really terrible state. Yeah. And she was um, sadly put to sleep on the operating table oh, because... Sorry um it uh, the situation was so terrible and uh, this has really been in my mind very recently because my current um one of my current dogs harry has very recently gone through not exactly the same experience but he ended up having to have his spleen removed which had two absolutely extraordinarily unusual tumors and everybody was completely amazed by him he's 16 he bounced back from the surgery wow. he was playing with his toys two days after the after the surgery wow. and the difference between those dogs are that the, my first dog was predominantly fed on kibble and harry who's he's been with me since he was four or five i don't know his exact age when he came to me mm. so he's at least 16 mm. by that logic and he's going strong bounce back i've had to banish him to his playroom with all sorts of things to do so he's not joining in our conversation tonight okay and he's really happy and what's the difference the difference is i had learnt um about appropriate use of parasiticides etc he's been raw fed since he came to live with me and okay there's going to be lots of argument that that's anecdotal story i don't care he's well and he's thriving and hopefully is going to be around for a good time to come as, as, as a result and i've had some amazing help from a local holistic vet supporting him after the surgery um, I'm incredibly lucky to have her to work with, both with my own dogs and mm. in my behaviour work. She's She's been a real gem of a find. I'm so lucky to have been introduced to her. Oh, that's fantastic. And what's what's her name and where is she, Morag? She is near to Cardigan in West Wales, mm -hmm. and her name is Michaela Just. And if you're in the area of West Wales, she's completely wonderful. I have no hesitation in recommending her to to people she's she's really knowledgeable she offers she's a homeopath and um acupuncture um and my dogs took to her immediately which is wonderful, wonderful. Um, and considering they met her in her back garden wearing a mask the first time you know that's a slightly odd situation to meet your new vet isn't it so, Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. Good. Mm -hmm. And so, um, just way back in the day, was there any any event that took you, f that made you shun kibble and go for raw in particular? Um, there was, and it's a bit, it, it's not your sort of normal conversation. Um, <laughs> I was, at the time I had Dexter cattle, and I was buying um, bull calves from the dairy at the top of the hill from where my cattle were and double suckling them on my Dexters. And I was chatting to the herdsman one day um, about, because his cattle were on virtually a zero grazing system. And to be fair, they were loose housed and they were very happy. But still, you know, I operate at the level of a three year old and cows live in fields and eat grass. So that was a bit odd to me. And we kept having this sort of, banter i suppose about cows living in fields and eating grass and one day he turned around and said to me <laughs> why why do you feed your dogs biscuits then and i went <laughs> oh I yeah that's it. just sweet i love it and uh, for, and i've never looked back since and and um I, 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 this is this is a, a genuine story not just because 
I happened to be talking to you, Nick. Mm -hmm. But I then came on a, um, one of your talks in Hampshire. Oh. And I sat there probably looking a bit deranged because I sat with my jaw on the table because it just all made so much sense. Oh. And, yeah, and I, I literally just sat there going, oh, my goodness, this is just phenomenal. Absolutely. Uh, and my proudest, one of my, I've got two really proud things in relation to my dogs. And one was when, and you won't remember this because you obviously so many people, you saw my blue collie, Glass. And, oh, diligently sent you my food diary and you said that it was exemplary and normally <laughs> you can drive a coach and horses through them but mine was exemplary and I was I was I became very big-headed at that point I'm not gonna lie that's fantastic oh I'm so pleased uh, and the talk in Hampshire whereabouts in Hampshire because I'm trying to remember it was in darkest Hampshire in the new forest I think okay I can't I can't remember exactly where it was. Well, how funny. That's but, wonderful. I didn't know, I, I didn't know you were gonna say it. that. That was uh, um yes, how fantastic. I'm so pleased. That's really no, that's, that's a, a, absolutely, absolutely genuine story. I and I I was aware of your existence before that, but I hadn't really, you know followed you in any sense. Um yeah. and, and that that was a that was a real kind of moment of of uh, revelation gosh how fantastic and do you find um because now you're 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 a big name in behavior uh and reactive dogs and um do you find raw makes a difference i mean i i kind of ask I, it's, it's silly for you to, to ask it but there may be people who are not aware to tell, tell me tell us tell us of your experience with raw and behavior for example so I, I've had just, I've got numerous, numerous, numerous clients who've come to me as behavior clients. And I always talk about food and nutrition and the importance of it because, of course, I do. I could, how could I not? Yeah. And I have a large number of clients who absolutely, genuinely change the dog's food and do very little else, to be perfectly truthful. And that the dog has gone from being a dog that was very challenging to live with for various reasons. But because it's fed a species appropriate diet, because its guts are doing what they're supposed to do. Therefore, it's got the, the, the excuse the pun, raw materials for its body to operate correctly. Yeah. And so, therefore, it's in a better state to regulate its emotional state because all the neurochemistry and everything is working as it should be working. And so, the 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 problem beha the problem behaviours are are just not a problem. Um, and and that I could give you countless examples of clients in that situation, which is fantastic. Um, so I, I I really really believe that you it's something you have to address in a behaviour consultation, yes. and there's there's so much science, so much knowledge, so much good information. Okay, a lot of it at the moment is extrapolated from research in human beings, but we're not a million miles apart in mm. physiology, so. It's not unreasonable. And certainly, obviously, with my role with the Royal Feeding Veterinary Society, I'm so lucky that I have, you know, some of the finest minds in this subject um, talking about these things. So I'm, I'm definitely not dreaming this. This is definitely a, a real thing. And I see happy dogs, happy cats uh, with happy people so, so often with, with doing very little what you would strictly call behavior modification mm. because they've 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 started to meet the animal's needs and i i something else that i talk about which is clearly related to that is the rspca five five freedoms yes and the freedom to express normal behavior mm. well for a dog how can you express normal behavior if you're a dog that's meant to hunt and is meant to rip and chew and tear 
and you're given a bowl of biscuits it, 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 it's impossible <laughs> absolutely it's just not possible and that's that's so important for a dog's emotional well-being of course let alone the you know the nutrients within that food that's that's a whole separate discussion it's, that's fantastic. it's really important before i ask you a bit more about your business do tell me uh, have you got any any tips or tricks that you and I didn't prepare you for this question, so you're very welcome to say, "Oh gosh, I don't, I can't think of anything." But have you got any? I find that everybody I talk to, they say, "Oh, I always use this brand of such and such," or "I always use I, I don't know unicorn hooves on a Sunday," or "I always use such and such." Have you got, got anything that you did that you do that that you find really really works? I missed a really critical bit of that sentence, Nick, I'm afraid. Have you got any, any tips or tricks that you'd like to share for, uh, in, in terms of raw food? In terms of raw food? Yeah, raw food I think one food. of the most common questions that arise is how do, you, how do you use raw food if you're doing something like... Um, counter conditioning and desensitization, which probably lots of people might know as the care protocol, especially with reactive dogs. And one could argue that there's no reason why you couldn't just use raw meat. Let's face it, falconers chuck raw meat around all the time and they survive perfectly fit and healthy to my knowledge. Uh, certainly ones I know do. Um, so one could, but equally, I do understand that, you know, for the for the more squeamish among us and, you know, people that are maybe walking the dog on the way to work, etc., that might not be so practical. There's no reason why you can't use um, cooked meats or small amounts of things that arguably wouldn't be normal in a dog's diet, like cheese. But it, Anybody that's in the reactive dog Facebook group will know the power of squeezy cheese, which, let's face it, nutritionally is not something fabulous. However, if it, it's helping a dog's emotional state in certain situations, then that's a, a forgivable sin in my book. Don't I, just don't don't look at it from a nutritional point of view. Think about it as something else. Fabulous. Fabulous. So tell us about uh, Geller. What do you what? Uh, uh are there cases that you that, that you really like to see is, is there anything uh that you that the that you you tend tend towards cases that you, that you really um, live to do i think my my favorite cases to work with and i suppose i suppose because i've i've lived with it personally are mm. reactive dogs so dogs that are um, finding certain situations in life difficult and they um, they over respond in those situations to mm. try and um, get themselves into a, a situation where they feel safe yeah um, and reactive dog it, it's what is a dog that reacts well any dog that's alive is reacting to its environment of mm. course so arguably it's a, it's a difficult term however it's become a term that is associated with dogs that are overreacting in certain situations arguably and um, and the reason that i find I'm, i suppose i'm drawn to such dogs is because i've lived with two of them mm. and and so i've got direct per, I've got, as well as having the sort of academic knowledge of how one should be helping such dogs I've also got a very, very practical approach to it because I've personally lived with two dogs who really, really struggle and they're both retired working sheep dogs. So they've come out of their working life with me and then suddenly had to go for walks on harnesses and leads in public places with all their choices taken away because they're on a lead attached to me. And that's just not their normal frame of reference. And it's very frustrating for them. And that was a bit of a that was a bit of a shock to my system when I had to start um, living with them in a very different way when they retired. And consequently, I've had to sort of work out. Yes, I knew the theoretical stuff, but then suddenly I was, I was having to actually use that myself. And you realize that, yes, of course, the theoretical stuff is very important and it's what everything's based on that one mm. would do to help and support a dog like mm. that. 
but you do also have to do practical stuff on a day-to-day -day basis and it has an emotional toll on the human beings living with that dog because you haven't got a dog that you can go for a lovely walk on a Sunday afternoon with your friends and their dogs and go to the pub and back in the days when we could of course you, you can't do that because that just doesn't work with a dog that can't cope with that so you have to sort of adjust your expectations of that dog and for some people when they take on a dog they just have no clue that that could possibly possibly happen and it can mm. be really really devastating to people I guess it's the opposite to it's almost the opposite to an emotional support dog for somebody with um, autism or anxiety that sort of thing you almost in a situation where you've got a dog that's causing you anxiety and stress yeah, yeah. not intentionally through no fault of the dog but yeah. the reality is that you've got this dog and you've got all of these ideas of what having a dog is going to be like and it turns out to be really 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 different to that experience and that's that's tough and i think one of the things i find most frustrating about these cases is that so 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 often these dogs have underlying physical and or medical issues going on which you'll be all too familiar with i'm sure sure but but, but many people may not so do, do 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 spill the beans on that please so the sorts of things that um we see very very commonly mm. are dogs that have got pain from somewhere mm. and that can be you know dogs if you're a dog showing that you're in pain is not a smart move in nature because it, it reveals you as being vulnerable mm. so they're very very good at hiding this um and yet of course it has an impact on their behavior they're less tolerant of things we, we all know that if you're if you've got a headache or, you, or you're hungry or your legs a bit sore you, you are just shorter with your 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 partners your family your colleagues you just are we all mm. know that mm. however you know lovely natured we may be the majority yeah. of the time sure. something hurts you're a bit snappy yeah. at, at the very least and it, it's quite um i find it very satisfying of it that's not quite the right word because obviously it's bad that an animal is in pain of course but if you can identify what's going on and you can resolve that pain, then suddenly that animal is in a much, much better place. Therefore, mm. so is its human family and, and everybody is in a, in a much better place as a consequence. And what I enjoy about that is that it really is a question of teamwork. I'm a veterinary nurse and a behaviorist, I'm not a vet. So I can't prescribe pain medications. I can't, do surgery to sort out dodgy joints or anything like that but what I can do is I can facilitate that team approach yeah. I can facilitate saying look actually maybe and this happens very very often maybe somebody's been to their vet the vet's examined the dog and not found anything wrong mm. well of course in many cases vets are seeing dogs in 10 minute appointments on slippy floors in situations where the dog of course it's not going to behave normally because it's anxious it's in a strange environment with somebody poking and prodding it and that's not that's not a good situation for 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 that dog and yeah. so nowadays it's so much easier because of course with all the technology that we've got now and people are so much more familiar so what i will often do is get people to video the dog mm -hmm. walking away from them walking towards them from both sides in its normal home environment so the vet is then looking at a video of the dog being the normal dog and then is able to see what, what what you're talking about yeah and often that has a really great outcome and you get a pain trial and you work out what's going on and then suddenly everything's much better better even yet i'm so so lucky to work with so many of the holistic vets who are offering acupuncture herbal medicine homeopathy and also there are so many fantastic body workers I know um when we were talking earlier Nick you mentioned that you'd been talking to Tony Nevin on here yeah, yeah. who is just an absolute legend of an osteopath mm. 
and you know to have that teamwork that 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 in, input is so valuable um and i was very lucky until i moved last year i had a fantastic um therapist very nearby to me Gemma Hodson who's just an absolute genius at spotting really really subtle things I as a veterinary nurse I think my observational skills are pretty hot she makes me look like a rank amateur she's absolutely phenomenal um, and just working with, with all of these different people who bring different aspects to the to, to the mix yeah. it, it's so satisfying to pull all those people together to help one individual animal and the humans that are struggling with with with, with that animal and it's mainly dogs that i work with uh -huh. um occasional cats occasional horses but mostly it's dogs mostly what would you say was the the the, the most common uh, misunderstanding or mistake that people make with reactive dogs trying to put them in situations that they're not ready to be put in we, as human beings we're always in such a rush mm. and we're always thinking about what we want to do and people are very often not good at going my dog hates this i need to do something different with my dog and i, I i've got a number of clients whose dogs um barely leave the house and garden because they just can't cope with it it's just too much very commonly those are dogs that have come from overseas rescues yeah. and they're just not geared up for living in the way that we live for being confined in our houses from being confined in our gardens and then worse yet going out and there's all this other stuff going on but you're on a lead and a harness and you you you, can't, you have no choice about where you go because mm. you're attached to your human being who's in, in many cases intent on marching along and and definitely there are so many people that that are so brilliant with these dogs and turn their lives inside out and upside down to accommodate these dogs and mm. what lucky dogs they are um it's 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 really special to work with people that are have got a dog that's got that level of difficulties and they get that the dog is really really struggling and accommodate that dog's needs rather than trying to sort of make the dog fit their life they adapt their lives to accommodate that dog's needs, yeah, which is wonderful right. yeah to see. it is really is isn't it that's amazing so um and Gemma hodgson was the person you were saying who's got the uh, the uh an incredible um observational skills is that Gemma? Yeah. Uh, uh let me see and where's she based where's Gemma hodgson so she's in chicksbury okay and it, I, I missed it. Is she a vet or a, a physio? She, no, or? she's no, she's um, she is. Uh, she started out working with T Touch, and then she went off and trained as a musculoskeletal therapist. She's also a behaviourist. She's sort of she's she's in a wonderful position to sort of look at a situation from many different angles. And you know, I'm probably old enough to be her mother, nearly, but I want to be her when I grow up. Wow! Wow! Oh, that's she's, fantastic. She's, she's really good. We'll maybe have to go. And there are lots of other really good people as well, um, without a doubt. Um, in fact, it was Janet Finley who introduced me to Gemma. Janet taught, um, taught Gemma, and Janet Finley is another absolutely awesome person. There's a lot of really good people working with these very, very challenged dogs. And they're all different. They all have different focuses, different um, what they personally bring to the situation. And, um, you know, we're really, really lucky to have some great people. Um, there's somebody called Beverly Courtney, who's over in, um, oh, my goodness, Norfolk, Norfolk, Suffolk, Norfolk, that side of the country anyway, the opposite side of the country to me. Yeah. And she's absolutely phenomenal with puppies and she's written some absolutely awesome straight talking books mm. that are just say her just name again beverly courtney beverly courtney great okay that's good that's and good. Uh, she's 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 a behaviorist um she's an awesome trainer she helped me a lot with my flossy when i very first um took 
tick on flossy because sometimes it doesn't matter how much you know you just need another pair of eyes that's not sort of emotionally involved in the situation and Floss, flossy was a very emotional situation because a very good friend um who i shepherded for when he went on holiday um he died very very suddenly and she was his working dog and i'd, I'd known her and worked her since she was a little puppy mm. and suddenly she'd lost her job she'd lost her human partner and she she was in a, in a difficult situation so she she came to live with me and she's she's a she's a cracking dog now but my goodness she was hard work to start off with <laughs> so um I'm, I'm really really lucky to work with vets amazing vets um amazing behaviorists amazing trainers um really 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 fortunate and that, that I, I could go i People that, that I'm going to offend people because I haven't mentioned everybody who's wonderful, but I could be here all night telling you all the wonderful people that I'm really lucky to work with. So that was very well, dull I'll, for everybody. You what, Morag, we thank you, and I can I can absolutely categorically say everybody at the Raw Feeding Veterinary Society thinks you're wonderful as well, uh, even when you chivy them and chase them and give them a hard time in, a, in your inimitably pleasant way so you're doing absolutely amazing work there at the Royal Feeding Veterinary Society and, and on, on behalf of all, everybody I really want to say thank you so much for mm. so much work over so long um mm. do do say how uh, uh, anybody uh, who's watching this uh the, the this this program can get in touch with you um, so the website is gellertbehaviour.co.uk and there's a whole story of why it's called that on the website and um, I'm sure many people are familiar with the story of Gellert um, and it kind of sums up that misunderstanding of what the dog is doing and that I, it, it was when I was thinking of what to call my business it was one of those absolutely literally waking up in the middle of the night going that's it that's the right yeah. name for it it just fits so well. So, um, so Gellert behaviour. Yeah, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Morag, it's been an. It's. I've been. This is probably the most relaxed I've been for an entire George or show <laughs> since we started about a year ago. So, thank you for a really uh, lovely, gentle, informative, uh, graceful evening. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Well, I have to say a thank you to you, Nick, because you did such a wonderful thing. I'm sure most people know, but Nick, Nick founded the Raw Feeding Veterinary Society. And it, it's just it is an incredible thing that he's created. And um, he's he's stepped back a little bit from all the management and organisation now, which rightfully so, because I don't know how he's staying from all the things that have gone on in, the, in that time to good effect. But um so thank you for what you've done and for the, the pleasure of working with you for all that time. It's, um, it's, it's been a, a great experience and everybody in the team is amazing. We're really lucky. Yeah, they're good, aren't they? They really are fantastic. Really good. Well, really, really thank good. Thank you very much. You Hang on there for, for one minute. I'm just going to say uh, goodbye to everybody. Um, guys, it's been absolutely uh, fabulous this evening. Thank you for, for coming along for the ride. Um, uh, I haven't got anybody organised for next week. I did have somebody, but they weren't able to make it. So watch this space, and we'll. I've got a few thoughts in my mind as to who we might we might get in. So we will have another interesting, dynamic, and thoughtful person to come and talk to us this time next week on Jaw Jaw, on Raw Raw. So uh, be good, uh, eat well, feed well, and be safe. And we will see you. Uh, this time next week and thank you again to Morag, Morag Sutherland at gellertbehaviour.co.uk fabulous really appreciate it take care guys all the very best